Hi guys, it's username Kate here and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to start my channel by putting some juice in this absolute beauty. It is an R1250 GS Rally TE. Now I've nicked it from work because obviously I sell motor rads and BMWs at Williams in Manchester. In your own sweet time my friend. So, I thought I'd just take it out for a bit of a spin. Number three, please. Thank you. Oh, look how good she looks. Damn. Damn, son. <laughs> and I'm living my best Germanic fantasy. Fire her up. You get that little box of shake, but nothing scary. Let's go. I'm always waving at people and I get no love back. So guys, I thought that for my first vlog on this beautiful German machinery, I would take you over Rivington. Oh, quick shifter, but it is smooth. Yeah, so I thought I'd take you over Rivington because that's like my playground. And it's local and the day's not great. I mean, where is that lockdown sun that we've been having? I'm just missing that lockdown sun. It was so nice. Oh, do you know what? I feel so grateful for where I live. The views are spectacular. Anyway, let's see what these lights are on. Let's let this car out. In fact, I'll do a cheeky little shortcut. Try and beat the lights. Doesn't always work, but it's worth a try, isn't it? And it worked. <laughs> yes. Ah, oh, the power of this bike. I love it. Do you know what? it's got enough? It's got enough so that you can have a hell of a good time. That new shift cam engine that's in it, you got power all the way through the rev range. Beautiful amounts of torque. Oh, stunning. Auto blip a look. Bar oh, down the box. Run. I <laughs> did a Royal Jordanian then. I'm trying out a new mount today. You'll notice that it's not the generic chest cam view that I normally rock. No, I've actually got a little thing which I'll post a video of um, just in the corner somewhere. It's called a Dango Design UK. I hope I've said that right. But yeah, it's a little gripper mount and you can grip it anywhere. I um, grip it on my helmet because it's got soft enough teeth not to damage anything so that's what I'm using today come on smart 
Let's get up this hill. I don't have time for your games. Oh crikey, look at this big Bertha. This is a nice little slot for me, I reckon. I shan't bite off more than I can chew. So my past experience with GSs is probably just that my dad has pretty much had them all his life. He absolutely loves them with a burning passion deep in his soul. And I always kind of saw them as just a sort of a, a bit of a boring dad bike, no offence. Like, you know, they've not got a sports bike, horsepower, they're there to kind of do everything well. And I never really appreciated them the way that I should. day they were like why don't you take it out and I was like what take a big 1250 GS out are you mad do you want me to die I can't touch the floor it's heavy I'll never be able to ride it and they were like nah get yourself on a seat height reduced one stumpy little legs version not ashamed that is me I got myself on a seat height reduced one which happened to be our demo, a Rally TE and I absolutely fell in love. I can pretty much flat foot one foot, that's for sure. Now as you can see it's pretty bumpy and that is because I have the suspension set on the lowest physical possible setting and that is because of my short little legs. So obviously i could whack it into auto which would adapt it and then when i'm back doing like sort of non-bumpy road riding just whack it back in minimum but i don't mind it i just deal with the bumps i ride a triumph usually so the triumph is usually a lot more bumpy so i'll be all right blipper fourth gear stunning love it oh, I do try to behave but it is an open road that just calls your name but yeah so going back to the story that I've been harping on about since I got on here um, I didn't expect to like the bike I didn't expect to really care much for it yeah, it's loaded with technology and stuff like that, and that's brilliant, but so is a lot of things nowadays, and I just thought, oh god, I'm going to hate it. Wrong. Got on it. As soon as I left work, the first thing that struck me was how easy it is to ride. It's no effort. I don't know whether it's the riding position, how you quite... You know, straight backed, arms out, or nice tall bars. I don't know whether it's that boxer engine that's really, really low, so the bike feels insanely flicky. True story, crashed a monkey bike on this bend, broke my collarbone. Don't wish to repeat, stay on this time, Kate. Yeah, it's agile, it's nimble, it's light. just pulls through all the gears no matter whether you're going far too slow for what gear you think you should be in it's fine it just chugs along but it's not even an agricultural chug anymore now that it's got a shift cam it's just it just deals with it in a non-stroppy manner it's a rather sophisticated machine so we've got to endure a few average speed cameras here which is not too big of an issue when we get up to Rivy on the open road and I'm just really shocked because I just always thought a bike like this would be completely inaccessible to me and I'm finding the more that I ride it the more I'm 
I'm trying to own it as opposed to it own me, you know, when I'm pushing it around and stuff. And the more the day goes on, the less I seem to struggle with with moving it around. Honk honk. So yeah, one of the things that first impressed me was the fact that I could even get on it. So how I can sit on this and ride it competently and put my feet down when I need to stop at five foot four, three components to making a GS as low as possible. So this bike has seat height reduction. So if you were in the market for a GS and you wanted to make sure that you were getting a lowered from factory version, you would ask for seat height reduced. Basically, it means that the suspension is lower from factory. Now, what this means in terms of sacrifice is ground clearance. So if you're one of these mad adventurers that actually do want to take a GS off-road, which I would probably just prefer to tour on myself around Europe and all that mild jazz, uh, but if you want to do all the hardcore stuff, then you will be missing out on ground clearance, which might not be very fun. Because um, you might be bashing a lot of things in. Please don't cross, thank you. Another thing that I've done to make it as low as physically possible is put the seat on the lowest setting. Now there are two seat height options, there's a high and a low. Very easy to do. I'll probably do an extremely quick video on it just to show you. But yeah, it's very simple to do, very easy. And then the third thing to really help me out, on some bikes, not all, it depends what spec you pay for, You'll have the electronic suspension, or the dynamic ESA as they call it. So I have it on the lowest setting all the time. And the reason for that is it just helps me out with my stumpy little legs. can't blame me. I'm not trying to be a hero and wheelie over those in Corona era. I might be a bit of a gimp at times but I'm not wholly reckless. That's annoying that I couldn't cut that corner as usual. So that is basically how I can manage this bike. Obviously, don't get me wrong, the non-seat height reduced ones are perfect for you tall boys and girls out there. They're absolutely splendid. Nice tight one. Oh, quick shift, it's so bad. If you want an adventure bike and you are vertically challenged, you should not be ruling one of these out. Not at all. Because let's be fair, if I can ride it, anyone can ride it. Hopefully I give you all hope. Yes, yes, come on! It's just got such a lovely pull. It's just awesome. It takes nice tight bends, beautiful. Oh, it's just a pleasure, a pleasure to ride. Ah, ah. got a love Rivington. 
don't pay the road tax over here it would seem oh i'm actually from this borough <laughs> awkward so we'll just chill behind mr corsa for a bit so i can actually speak um without having to concentrate <laughs> Right, somebody, oh man, I can't remember who said it on my Facebook and please, please, please feel free to comment if it was you. But someone described this bike, how it rides in the most eloquent way and they described it as floaty. And that is exactly how you feel when you ride it. Floaty, effortless. Honestly, I never, ever thought that I would feel so in love with the bike to the point where i would say you know what i would have this over my triumph that i actually have now who'd have thought i certainly wouldn't have thought it would have been me but here we are and it's opened my eyes i must say if you've got any like predisposition or any negative thoughts about the, um, the GS and you've never actually ridden one, please ride one. Please enlighten yourself to how much fun you can actually have. So this model is a TE, so it is the Spandangli All Singing, All Dancing, Blingtastic version. So you've got your modes as standard, so I'm currently in dynamic, but you've got your enduro, you've got your road, you've got your rain, you've got your heat grips, I just tapped the mode button then, but I meant the heat grips there. Two settings, and you know what? Sometimes uh, manufacturers, I think you can accuse the heat grips of being a bit weak. Not these. It's like you're dipping your hands in the depths of Mordor. Wow, it's busy. It's a weak day, what's going on? I'd say do you all not have jobs, but probably all furloughed. Or it's Bolton, so possibly unemployed. Ha! <laughs> Just kidding. I'm from here. Don't be offended. So yeah, going back to what this um this bike has, this version has a stunning TFT dash. Cyclists should be banned from narrow country lanes. Let's start a petition. Would you sign? But um, no, sorry, I keep getting distracted, so easy. My brain is like Aldi's middle aisle. Um, yeah, so things about this, TFT dash, beautiful. The display is um, gorgeous. At first, I thought that the, my Triumph Street Triple one was like a better dash, but the more I ride with this and see its functions, I absolutely love it. It's just so clear what mode you're in, nice gear indicator, nice speed, time, temperature outside, got your rev counter. Uh, this model comes with GPS prep, so you've got the preparation there for your sat nav, which is quite nice. This screen is not an electronic screen, it is a manual twisty knobby type jobby. <laughs> Rhymed! <laughs> Um, so I prefer to have the screen on the lowest setting because I don't like looking through like perspexy type material. It really, I just don't, I'm not comfortable with it. I feel like, don't get me wrong, being a biker, I can ride with my visor down through torrential rain and be like, yeah, fine, I can see. But for some reason, just the way my eyes see things through a screen, I don't like it. It's not for me. But thankfully the screen on the lowest setting is perfect for me um, again this model as I was saying it's got the ESA you can tell when it's got the dynamic ESA when it has that button hopefully you can see it it's got like a nice little spring on there so basically you've got your, your maximum so it's on the tallest suspension setting all the time you've got your minimum it's on the lowest suspension setting all the time and then you've got your auto so if you're just going out for a ride, it will set the suspension according to your weight um, by witchcraft, quite frankly, I think is the only way you can describe it. And if you want to get a pillion or you want a pillion with panniers and luggage and all that jazz, then 
you can also it'll adjust to all that weight oh man it's just beautiful look at that flat foot no problem oh i just love it So yeah, all the modern Jesses and um, some other models in the range, they've got that Wheel of Fortune here. This model has cruise control. I haven't used it yet because I haven't felt the need to. I've not gone any long distances. Although I do intend to meet up with some of my biker mates on Sunday. So there's a lot of motorway involved. So I'll definitely test it out then. Um, this specific bike, not necessarily model because you can spec it up to have this, has the SOS. Now this is some insane feature, the very comforting feature to have and BMW are class leading, market leading when it comes to this technology on a bike. So they already do it on the cars, it's come from the cars, they've got this kind of button in the roof, but on the bike if you are you know in a crash or anything like that they will sense that the bike is is took an impact and using the sos they will send someone to your location another cool thing is you know it works european wide as well you just say that right european wide sounded weird works european wide as well so if you are traveling and you're on the mountain passes and something god forbid goes wrong it'll know uh, you know given if any impact happens to the bike if you just you know break down or anything and you're on your own and there's not necessarily been an impact you can press that button it does come up you press it um and it's actually got a built-in speaker so somebody will say do you need assistance it's the same if you just drop it in your garage um, obviously it senses that it's not a massive impact so there'll be a little voice that'll go hi there would you like any assistance and then you can either tell them that you're all right I'm just been a knobhead and dropped my bike classic Kate <laughs> and then they'll be like okay no worries but it is good and also if you're driving along the motorway and there's an accident that happens in front of you or there's a really bad accident and there's no emergency personnel at the scene you can press that button whilst passing and it will send people out which i think is pretty cool tank range guys i don't know i've just got the thing and i'm not focusing on all the geeky tech specs at the minute i'm just focusing on the feeling that it gives me and trying to relay that onto you guys because I cannot believe how sexy it feels to ride. Like it is a joy, it's just joyful to ride. Oh, gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. But obviously what I'd like from you guys is if you wanna see anything specific, let me know and I'll do a video for you. So I'm going to do a video about how I sort of set it for a stumpy little leg height. I'll do a video on the dash itself if you guys want. Um, but if you guys can think of anything else, please do let me know. Because it's always nice to be aware of what people want to see. Teapot one. Bruce, what have you done? What have you made me? What have I become? I can't believe how in love I am with this bike. Do any of you guys have GSs? Of course you do. I've just recently gained quite a few followers of Bruce's, so I'm absolutely positive that loads of you all ride GSs now. Let me know what you think of them. How are they to live with? What are the things that you don't like about it? Oh, I love that when you just give it a quick blip at the lights and the bike shakes. Still got the box a shake, but not to the degree that my dad's old BMW has. Flipping at you rev that, it nearly launches you off. Let's get cracker lacking. Oh man, it just turns so easy. 
just so well balanced. Light, nimble, just absolutely gorgeous. Right guys, so that concludes my little short blast out. I've had such a good time, absolutely. Just loving being out on this bike. I'm finding myself making excuses to go out. Oh, I've run out of soya milk. Be right back. But yeah, I really hope that you guys just enjoyed this quick little vlog. And yeah, I'm honestly baffled at how much I genuinely love this thing. It's just not something that I expected to like. And here I am, considering what banks to rob. I mean, how I can feasibly save up and afford one. If you guys are seriously considering a GS and you're local to Manchester, you're more than welcome to come and test ride one. Let me get you on one because I think if you test ride it, you'll fall in love with it and you will definitely want to buy one. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Please like, comment, subscribe, give this biker a wave. All likes, subscriptions, comments, everything are so appreciated. I can't even tell you. So thanks for watching guys. Stay safe. And until the next time, Okay, so for this vlog today, I should probably not be doing this speed whilst introducing myself and the vlog. What a dumbass. Do you want to go to jail? No.